Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Why is it important to get a diagnosis? Is to rule out the reversible causes: infection, brain tumor, depression. Assess to symptomatic treatments. What else is going on? What else can be treated? Uh, plan for the future. We at the Alzheimer's Association talk about being proactive rather than reactive to get the information so that if you have the information you can make good decisions to treat health and stroke related risk factors. Diagnosis can expand medical uh, support network we can't, you can't go it alone with Alzheimer's disease. You need to have a team. We hope the Alzheimer's is part of your team. We hope that other community resources, your doctors, are part of that team and to get involved in research. We have a program called Trial Match that we connect individuals to clinical trials and that really is the key to finding a cure or means of prevention. Again, calling our 800 number really gives you access to a lot of other services. Um, and it's really the gateway for information, education, awareness, uh, support groups, um, and they are key. We do care consultation where we'll meet with families, uh, develop an action plan, and uh, help navigate the community resources as I mentioned, our education programs, I brought a calendar of programs that we're offering uh, for the next few months. Uh, we have many publications that talk about knowing the 10 signs, the basics of Alzheimer's, our helpline cards are over at that um, table, as well as trainings. We offer some good educational trainings for families um, you know, on how to take care of your loved one with Alzheimer's disease. Um, we provide multicultural outreach. We have a program called the Medic Alert Safe Return. It's a wanderer's alert system. Uh, Alzheimer, individuals with Alzheimer's, um, wandering is very big concern and we understand that six out of ten people will wander. Um, so we team with Medic Alert and a person gets uh, registered into a database and it works in Massachusetts, it works in Florida, it works throughout the United States and we are the liaison. If your loved one wanders, you call the Safe Return Helpline and we um, work with our uh, local police departments, our search and rescue teams, first responders to get your loved one home. As I mentioned, support groups, we have over 200 support groups throughout Massachusetts that provide support uh, for caregivers, but we also have um, some for people in the early stages of the disease. We do a lot of public policy and advocacy work to make sure quality of care for individuals living um, in nursing homes and assisted livings are good. Um, and we also, again, are the leaders in research. Um, you know, we are very hopeful that by mid-century we will have a means of prevention uh, for Alzheimer's disease. Um, again, call our helpline if you're concerned about yourself or your loved ones, we can really help you access the best medical care and all the information and really help provide you with support throughout the journey. And we know that people on average can live eight to 10 years um, and we'd like to be that support for you. Um, and I thank you for your time. Julie, thank you very, very much. <laughs> Julie is really terrific and so is her boss, the Alzheimer's Association. And remember, everything that she just talked about, all the services that are provided are free, right? They are supported. That's one of the reasons why we try working with the Alzheimer's Association in terms of fundraising, because they're all supported by donations. So the kind of the two basic things to know about when you're face, starting to face these issues is first, the services, there, there are a lot of services across a whole variety of locations, and it's very hard to navigate. But second, that there are people there to help you navigate it. 
The Alzheimer's Association is one of the really big ones, right? The other really, really big one, throughout the state, um, there are um, organizations called Aging Services Access Points, or ASAPs. The state is divided into areas. Each area is served by a nonprofit organization that helps folks in the communities in that area to navigate the system and also actually helps them with resources, provides programs, money that comes from either the federal or the state government. Here uh, in Clinton, uh, Montachusett, Montachusett Elder Services is the entity that Montachusett Home Care is the entity, the Aging Services Access Point, that is in charge of all of the services for this area. Um, if, if, you, if you don't know them, you're never gonna, we're not, you're ne never gonna, you're gonna have a lot of trouble figuring out where those services are and what might be available. And I guess I would really urge you, if you've got someone who's got early stage, or, you know, they may, may have dementia, even before that, just as an elder, give them a call let them know who you are, let them know where you're living, what your needs are. You may be entitled to services right now by virtue of your income that you did, were, didn't even know you were eligible for. So you wanna be talking to these folks. We asked Joyce Ryan from Montachusett to talk to us a little bit about the services that are provided by Montachusett and also in, in general and also specifically how those services might apply in a situation like this if you've got a loved one that may be experiencing some memory loss and you might be worried about dementia. Uh, and just to talk about the programs that are available and the way in which to get involved with them. Joyce. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, my name's Joyce Ryan. I'm a licensed social worker and I work at Montachusett Home Care. I've been there for um, almost nine years and I coordinate a program for caregivers caring for loved ones. So um, I talk to a lot of caregivers during the day and it's very stressful being a caregiver, I know that. So Montachusett Home Care is a nonprofit. Uh, we serve 21 communities in this area and we actually give services to aging adults and also disabled adults. Uh, we also try to support their caregivers, that's really important. Um, many family members are struggling to help people stay home and that's our mission, to help keep people in their homes as long as possible and as safely as possible. So one of the things that people do and it's really important, ASAPs across the state, there's 27 of um, agencies across the state that do exactly the same thing we do in different regions. And so the first thing you should do is call them. They will send an assessor into the home and go out and see what services you'd be eligible for, what your needs are, uh, what does the person needing services really want, and try to figure that all out. They'll go through your income to see how much you would pay for the services. In many cases, if you're very low income, you would pay very small amounts, maybe $7 a month for any kind of services. In other cases, you might be paying up to $70 a month, depending on what your income level is. So one of the things that they would do is they would help with non-medical issues. So if you need help bathing and dressing, if you need help with somebody for personal care, for um, they can't do the laundry anymore because they can't go down the stairs and the, lawn, the washer and dryer is in the basement. So they would help with those kinds of things. They might even help you with uh, going to the grocery store and shopping for you and getting groceries because you can't do that on your own anymore. It's too heavy to carry the bags. There's so many things that they can help you with. They help with homemaking to clean up your home a little bit so your home gets um, is safer and cleaner for you. Uh, there's all kinds of things that the home care services can offer to people and so we really recommend that you call them as soon as possible and they'll go out and tell you what you're eligible for. Anyone who has an Alzheimer's diagnosis doesn't matter what age they are, they are eligible for services through an ASAP. Okay? So uh, some people just need medication reminders and so they would go into the home and do that too. We get a lot of requests from people who are still working, they have somebody at home who's on medication and they can't remember to take their meds. So could you send somebody into the home um, one day a week for you know half an hour just to do that, medication reminders. So those are all kinds of things that ASAPs do. 
Do you have any questions that you want to ask about um, ASAPs? Okay, let's move on. I have just a couple of interesting statistics about caregivers. In Massachusetts alone, there are 600,000 informal caregivers. Uh, and, the, and of course, everybody knows older Americans are the fastest growing population group. And the largest group among the people are age 85 and over. And according to the Alzheimer's Association, nearly 50% of all Americans over the age of 85 will have Alzheimer's or some other related dementia. So that's an important figure as time goes on and the older generation is getting um, living longer and increasing, then we're going to have more and more people with some problems. So one in four households includes someone who is caring for an ill relative or friend age 50 or over. And 60% of all caregivers are women, but there's more men now involved in caregiving than ever before. 59% uh, of caregivers work still outside the home. They still have to work. They're taking care of people that are a little younger now than they used to be. And so that's a big issue, how to take care of somebody and also maintain a job. And 30% of the caregivers caring for seniors are themselves age 65 and over. So we often see people that are um, in their 90s caring for someone else in their 90s, their spouses that also have Alzheimer's or a related dementia. So it's very, very difficult and people need support. The caregivers do need support. So please call, call either the Alzheimer's Association, call um, any of the ASAPs, People are there to help. It's very hard to be a caregiver by yourself. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. So if you're Frank and Mary and you own your home and it's worth $400,000 and Frank has an IRA worth $200,000 and they've got savings, if they've got assets of $800,000, uh, if Frank has income from Social Security, say $1,500 a month and from a pension $750 and Mary has income of $750, a month, so they've got actually total income of $3,000 a month. They are eligible for the programs that you were just hearing about, right? The programs for, to help folks in these early stages to deal with trying to stay at home, to get some home care, to get Meals on Wheels, to get Lifeline, to get support services and, 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 and help with support groups. You're eligible for all of those things now. There are no asset restrictions regarding any of this. Later on, if Frank and Mary, if Frank, if Mary needs more serious help, um, then uh, then there is a large program that would that would be willing to that, that through which some through which Mass Health, the state name for the Medicaid program, would provide much more extensive services at home. In order to qualify for those, there are asset requirements. But in that case, if Mary needed to qualify for those programs, while she could not have assets of more than two thousand dollars, Frank could have unlimited assets. So in, even in those situations, it may very well be that people with substantial assets can qualify to help and get those kinds of services at home. 